Hey, hey guys, welcome to the vlog. So I'm going to answer a question that was put to me by a founder, somebody who's developing an app and they had a bunch of questions about how to approach developing the app. So I figured it might be something that a lot of you would find interesting. So when you're looking at app, the first question that should come to mind is whether you should go native, meaning do you write a version in Swift for iOS and another version in Java or Kotlin for Android? Or do you go with a hybrid approach with products like Flutter or React Native, PhoneGap, etc.? So let's uh, review some of, her, some of the questions and uh, we will take it from there. I'm not going to reveal the name of the company or the person because it's still not live and I figure they wouldn't want people to know about their product yet. So we'll take it from there. This individual sent me an outline of what the project is all about. Uh, pretty, pretty complete in terms of what specifically the app was going to do, including a lot of screenshots, etc. And this is important when you're presenting a product for the first time, visuals are key, visuals are key. Conceptual breakdowns in text are not going to do it. You want visuals. So, and I have been preaching this for years with regards to web development, any type of development. If there is, if there are screens, if there are views for people to see, that's where you start the whole process of designing any new app, web app or not. So the first question, would you personally use HTML5 to develop a simple version of this app? So when making that decision, you have to look at whether or not your app requires any specific functionality, hardware capabilities that you can't access through a hybrid option. So let me translate that into non-nerd. You have basically two options when you're developing mobile apps. You have either writing native, writing in Swift for iOS, and writing in Java or Kotlin for Android devices. Now, the advantage to writing native is you get speed, speed advantage, and you get also a full access to the hardware, to the phone. So if you're writing something, I don't know, for iOS and Swift, you could access the, the gyroscopes, you can access the camera, you can access all these things. Now, when you're writing hybrid apps, we're using uh, some sort of translation matrix or layer using something like Flutter or React or Cordova, PhoneGap. Now, these are all a little bit different, you know, uh, React Native, Native, I believe, compiles down to Native, but it's still using a translation layer at some point. I don't want to get into the weeds about this. Now, the thing is, some of these translation layers, if you will, some of these hybrid frameworks, they may not have full access to the hardware or not as maybe the access to the hardware is not as good rather than it is if you wrote native. Now, I don't keep up to date on all the developments of Flutter, React, and PhoneGap, et cetera, what's going on there. But it's something you just have to do a quick look at. So you look at your app, you say, okay, what do I need it to do? What aspects do I need to access the camera? If I need to access the camera with my app, can I do that with Flutter or React Native or PhoneGap, Cordova or whatever? framework you want to use. So if number one, you can say yes, with the ch my chosen framework, React Native or Flutter, I can access uh, the phone to the, to the degree that I need to make my app work, then that solves that problem. Now in terms of speed, you're only going to see speed issues or performance issues uh, with Native versus one of these uh, hybrid approaches is in very intense type of application. So if you're writing a game that's going to be using a lot of CPU and GPU, uh, you may need to go native. Again, it's on a case-per-case -case basis. So in the case of this particular startup, that was not indeed the case. It was much more of a bunch of web forms with some animations here and there. So I think that in this situation, going hybrid was a good approach. Next question. We are trying to build a simple version for both iOS and Android 
and they then and then make the app more advanced later on. Does HTML5 work for app development for iOS and Android? So the simple question, simple answer to this question, yes, of course. And I just want to point out that this is the right way to approach building any new app. You want to get what the uh, with the hedge fund community, not hedge funds, but the VC community, the startup community would call MVP, Minimum Viable Product. That means basically building the minimal implementation of your product, the minimal version, the bare bones version of your idea. You want to get it out as quickly as possible into the hands of your users as quickly as possible just to see if there's any interest in any traction. And then what you're going to find, of course, is that it's going to go through many, many changes and iterations. That's why you want to get it out quick. You want to get it out dirty. And so, because if you try to lock down your code base so, it's, so it is super solid with your first version, you're going to be wasting a lot of time and resources because you're going to have to tear down a lot of things that you've done. Mm. For example, with Studio Web, Studio Web is seven years old, my learning platform, my training platform, something we built a prototype about seven years ago, and it was built, as I said, rough and tumble. And it was a good thing because I would, I don't know, we had to change a significant percentage of the app over time. I'm not sure what the percentage is. I don't know if we changed 40% of the app or 30% of the app or 45% of the app, it's hard to say. Uh, point is, a significant a significant part of the app had to be uh, had to be updated, had to be changed. Uh, the way we thought about things had to be totally changed at some point. And as a result, uh, I was, I'm glad I didn't have locked down a super robust code with uh, uh, centralized error reporting and all this kind of stuff now. Hardcore nerds are probably having heart attacks now and go, oh, how could you do that? Well, you have to understand, when you have a startup product, if you will, you don't know what's going to work, so you just got to get it out as quickly as possible. Now that Studio Web is seven years old, we know the use case really, really, really well. In fact, we know it perfectly. With the new version of Studio Web that we just released, Studio Web 4, was a rewrite from scratch to take advantage of uh, all the new tech technology that has evolved over the last seven years and also just have a far cleaner code base based on what we know now. Because we, we, literally, we literally thought we needed, I'll, I'll use an analogy here, we literally thought we needed a, a uh, hatchback, but we actually needed a pickup truck. You know what I mean? So we had to take the whole design and change it, and that becomes messy. And, you know, any code base that's old, you have many different developers on it. You start changing directions over time. You have to change it. So the big example I look, I, I like to cite is Apple's, I, uh, not iOS, Apple's uh, macOS. Uh, when Steve Jobs came back and took over the company again, uh, he had to make that decision to basically trash the Mac OS operating system. Like they rewrote from scratch. OS X was a totally new operating system. Totally new operating system. And again, because the old Mac OS was designed at a time when computers hardware were a certain way and people use computers in a certain way. And it was so old and it was had so much legacy in it, they just had to let it go and start fresh. That happens every now and then. It's funny, I was just looking on YouTube. YouTube too. YouTube has these back end control panels, if you will, for creators. And they're writing a brand new version from scratch. And they, I was just watching a video they put out by their team. And same thing. They said, you know, it's they, they didn't specify it clearly, but they said, we want to add new features. But so we decided to rewrite from scratch because we want to be able to bring out the new features much more quickly with the old system. We couldn't. Translation, the old version of the app was so messy. The code base was so messy. But they couldn't, they didn't want to touch it anymore. And that happens all the time. It happens all the time. Getting back to the subject at hand, when you're doing a new product, when you're putting out a new app or new uh, web app, you want to get it out quickly as possible just to see what exactly it's going to be. Once you figure out how it's going to be, 
how precise it's going to be, uh, you know precisely rather what it needs to do and what users want, then you can do what I just did, what we just did, is rewrite Studio Web from scratch, started like eight, nine months ago, maybe, almost a year maybe, and um, so it's a brand new, shiny, spanking new code that will probably carry us for several, many years now. Anyhow, let's go on to the next question. What backend system would you need for companies to be able to track if someone enters their URL code or scans a QR code? Any database. This is something I would probably use an SQL database for, so you can create a bunch of relationships and so on. But, you know, when it comes to, and actually not just databases, but any, any, product, any tech product, you have different nerds will give you different opinions some prefer this language some prefer that some prefer no sql some people prefer sql for long-term data management i still believe that sql databases have an advantage over non-sql so uh, in terms of let's say you're choosing an sql based database you know I, I just go whatever you know you know whatever is accessible my sql is super accessible it's it's there it works fine uh, if you find uh, you have millions of users and for some reason MySQL can't handle it, which I don't see, but if you could, you have the resources to switch to whatever database style that you want. Don't make the mistake that young noob nerds make trying to build uh, a battleship when you don't really need one at this point. Next question. In terms of more animated features of this app, such as uh, things opening, um, I don't want to reveal too many details about this person's app. Um, so they're basically asking, you think we could um, do a simple version of these animations with HTML5 and then down the road, uh, make it more magical with other, uh, later down the road, make the overall experience more magical. So first question, can you do animations with HTML5? Of course, with HTML5, CSS3, you can do very sophisticated work. You throw in some JavaScript and DOM, uh, you do some um, painting on the canvas, the, uh, uh, that's the browser canvas. I'm not sure if that translates into uh, the phone uh, frameworks. You'd have to look into it. But bottom line is, yes, you can do very sophisticated animations with JavaScript and HTML. You'd be really surprised at how far you can go with that. So yeah, for sure, 100%. Next question, if I wanted to build a simple version of this, where do I even begin? Do I start with developing a website where users can save uh, their information or should I start developing the app? Well, good question. First of all, you have to ask yourself, what's the main use case? Do you see people gonna be wanting to use, do this on a website or are they gonna wanna be doing this on an app? Keep in mind, um, uh, that brings up another option I didn't bring up by the way. Depending on your app, you may wanna just go with a responsive website. I personally don't like the idea of installing third-party apps on my phone unless I'm really compelled to. But going to a website that is responsive, Studio Web 4, by the way, is now responsive, works on phones and tablets, that might make sense. So Studio Web, by the way, is pretty sophisticated in what it does. And uh, that was a question that came up on my end. Do we create a... Uh, a mobile version, a, you know, a downloadable mobile version of Studio Web that people can use. Or do we create, whether it be native or using a framework like Flutter or PhoneGap, or do we just go responsive? Well, since my stuff is watching videos, entering code, answering, qu answering questions, multiple choice and code questions, there's no need to go native, right? There's no need to have all that extra power. So I said, nope, not going to go native and we just do it responsively. Back to the question, uh, if I wanted to build a simple version, where do I begin? So first thing, you identify your use case, you identify whether or not you think most people are gonna be using a website to do this, or if so, it's more of a web app, or you think it's gonna be more of something people use their mobile phones to do. If it's a blend and given the type of app, you may be able to do what we do with Studio Web and just just do a responsive version of your app to begin with. And if it gets really popular and add features and you feel need be, then you could maybe um, write a dedicated app where you can maybe perhaps put more sophisticated animations and so on. Um, so yeah, you have to decide what the use case is, number one. Number two, 
Uh, keep in mind that whether you build an app first or a website first, you're going to still need to build a website for branding purposes either way. Next question. Do you have any recommendation on books to learn programs necessary to build a simple version of this app? Ah, so I'm not sure about this question. I haven't got an answer back yet with regards to whether they actually want to write the code themselves or they want to hire coders. I think they got funding. It, it depends. It depends. If you're not a coder and you got a lot of funding, it might be a good idea, A. Well, it is a good idea to learn the basics of code, your foundations. People know my channel know that is the case. This way you could be able to make intelligent decisions, at least much more intelligent decisions about your technology choices. So you have to learn a little bit of code, even if you have no intentions of being a coder. On the other hand, if you don't have any money, then you're going to have to be a coder. So again, you learn your foundations, which again will give you will give you the ability to discern what technologies you need to use. And that said, overall, with many, 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 many mobile applications, I think the web tech, meaning using a framework like a phone gap or maybe React Native, maybe Flutter, might be the way to go. And if you worry about performance, by the way, of Flutter, I was just reading an article where I think for Alibaba, they developed something, an app in Flutter, it handles 50 million users, so Flutter can uh, scale. And I believe, I recall, Flutter uses the Dart programming languages, which is very, very, very similar to JavaScript. So if you know JavaScript, you learn Dart like, like this, right? Anyway, I hope that helps. I hope this type of uh, Q&A about building an app, considering the business issues, if you will, the business considerations is useful for you guys. I try to do what other people don't do on YouTube. I try to bring in my ex business experience and my software experience over the last couple of decades into this rather than just going over how to do something in React Native, how to do something in Flutter, which is cool. Those walkthrough tutorials are cool, but I just want to bring something different to the table. All right, you let me know what you uh, think. Mm. Oh, by the way, people have been asking me about uh, uh, merch. I'm thinking about doing need to nerd cups, uh, maybe some tasteful need to nerd t-shirts. I'm not sure. It's part of the philosophy, as you know. Uh, let me know what you think. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like this video, show your dislike in a harsh way and give me two thumbs down. Two. And if you do like the video, comment and let me know in the comments. I judge the type of material that I put out here based on the comments, based on the likes, dislikes, etc., etc. That's it for now. Bye-bye.